Praise the Lord, everybody. It's good to see all of you men here tonight and young men. Amen. There's nothing like coming together in the house of the Lord, in the presence of the Lord. Amen. All right. We're going to start with a worship chorus here. Invite you all in to come as close as you would like. We, we, we have plenty of room to explore, explore the space, as one might say. Amen. Let me serve. Let me serve a great God tonight. We know His name is Jesus. Why don't we just start before I sing anything? Why don't we just lift up our hands, lift up our voices, right now, and begin to tell Him how great He is, how excellent He is. Praise Him according to His excellent greatness, according to His mighty acts. Hallelujah! Has He been faithful to anybody in this place? Has He saved anybody in this place? Has he raised anybody in this place into newness of life? I once was dead, but now I'm alive. Once was blind, but now I see. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, you placed my feet on the solid rock, and I'm thankful tonight. I've come to magnify the name of the Lord. The name of the Lord is to be praised. Oh, somebody lift your voice right now. Hallelujah. Push through right now. Somebody push in and press into the presence of God. He is to be exalted in this place. He is to be lifted up in this place. Uh, there's no other name like the name of Jesus. Uh, and He's worthy of it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Woo. The splendor Let all the earth rejoice, all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light. Darkness tries to hide and trembles at his voice, trembles at his voice. Go ahead and lift your voice. How great. How great is our God? Oh, see how great, how great is our God? Oh, sing it out! How great, how great! Sing with me, how great. Our God, oh, see how great, how great is our God. Come on, sing name above all names. The name above all names, worthy of. How great is 
is our God. Oh, let's declare that again. He is a name above all names. Shout it. You're the name above all names. You are worthy of, worthy of all praise. My heart will sing how great is our God. Oh, how great. our God. Sing with me how great is our God. Oh, sing how great, He's so great is our God. Sing this next part. Then sing to my soul, my Savior. Show him how great he is tonight. Can we lift up the name that's above every name? Hallelujah, hallelujah. It's great to be able to come together with this great number of godly men on a Wednesday night. I, it just it touches me that this many men are coming together tonight the last Thursday night we had nearly the same number of men this is not a this is not a scene that you see play out in every church an awful lot of churches um, unfortunately they're they're built on the women in the church and they're lucky or they feel lucky if they can get the men to show up for anything and we have been so fortunate, so blessed at Christian Life Center to have godly men that show up, that come out for events like this, uh, that, that you're part of the church. You're not holiday members. You don't just come once in a while, but we have men in this church that show up all the time that are faithful that set that example for the generation to come and i am i'm thankful to be a part of a church with this many men that that take take the initiative and they put value on saying you know what we're going to church on a wednesday night amen amen so we welcome all of you out thank you for coming and being with us tonight i'm going to let you uh go back to your seats for just a moment as in the moment our ushers are going to dismiss us to give in the offering but before they do that I just uh, how many have had a stressful week so far we've had a rough week so far so often we don't let that be known I'm gonna tell you something I have looked forward to this service tonight because I know that 
You know what? When men get together and worship together and hear a word together and in and, and a little bit we will go next door and we will have fellowship together and some refreshments and some games uh, and it's just building. Uh, fellowship is spiritual. Coming and spending time together is spiritual. And I need that spiritual enrichment. Amen? Uh, this week has been... Uh, I don't have too many rough weeks. I was telling Brother Bob before I came up... Uh, we have three vehicles in our home. This week, all three vehicles have been on the fritz. It's been a stressful week. It's been one of those weeks where uh, someone said it today. I said, maybe it's Satan attacking us. That or it's just one of those weeks where uh, sometimes life is just, you go through a, str a little uh, run of bad luck. Whatever the case may be, we can all relate to those times when it just seems like everything is going wrong and nothing's working out and it's just you feel the frustration building and we're men so i hope we can admit that uh that we don't just stew in it and we can admit that you know what when things don't go just the way you want them to go what happens you start to feel that the frustration rising your blood pressure starts getting a little bit out of out of whack you can feel the temperature rising on your forehead uh, I'm not gonna lie I can admit that's how I've been today and yesterday with everything going wrong but uh, one thing I know to be true is that I knew if I can just get to Wednesday night if I can just get to church if I can just get in the presence of God and I can just worship I can get in there and I can lift my hands with my church family so I, listen, you should be praying at home. We should all be praying at home. We should all be worshiping at home. But there's nothing like what happens when you get together with other men of faith and your family and you worship together and you just feel his presence wash over a place and you begin to feel him ministering and here and giving strength that I know this week I needed it. And I know I'm not the only one that can say I needed it this week, so I'm thankful that we came together tonight. God bless you. Thank you for being at this men's service. In just a few moments after some more worship, I'll just give you an idea of what's going to happen. We're going to have a couple of speakers tonight that are going to speak some encouragement to us. They're going to encourage us as men to build us up, tell us how important we are, that we are needed, that what you're doing is not overlooked. You say, all I do is go to church. Yes, and amen. That's an example that we need. The example of godly, faithful men that show up. You don't have to be up here. The very, this is a very small sliver of what the ministry of men is. We need men who all you may do is say, I just show up. Yes, and that speaks volumes. That you just show up and you keep showing up and you keep living this life. And so we're gonna be ministering to tonight and I believe encouraging that tonight. If we could all stand. Our ushers are going to get ready to dismiss. We have this opportunity to give an offering. It's another form of worship. And another form of worship that I know our men lead the way in. Our church is blessed financially because I believe we have men in this church that understand the blessing of giving, the importance of giving. And so we're going to give in this offering and believe that God is going to bless what we give tonight. Let it be multiplied, fruitful for the work of his kingdom. Amen. Jesus, we ask you tonight to bless this offering. That you would let it be multiplied that God you see the needs before us you see what's in front of us you see how large the need is God I'm not gonna be downtrodden I'm not gonna look at it and think it's too big because I know that you are able you own the cattle on a thousand hills and God you own the hills and God the needs that we have I believe you're able to take care of that when we give I believe your hand gives upon it and you're gonna multiply it you're gonna bless it I pray your blessing on the givers. Bless our men tonight. Bless our jobs. Bless our incomes. Bless our families and our finances. In Jesus' name we pray, God. And we believe you for a blessing in this offering. CLC, it's offering time. Let's give unto the Lord. darkness holds it won't prevail for the God I serve knows only how to triumph my God will never fail oh yeah my God will never fail lift your voice and I'm gonna see a victory I'm gonna see a victory for the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. 
for I know, yes I know how the story ends I'm gonna see a victory I'm gonna see a victory Come on, declare it The battle Oh, that's powerful, man And I'm gonna see a victory Let's just shout that out, shout it out again. I'm gonna see, I'm gonna see a victory for the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm gonna see a victory, and I'm gonna see a victory yeah, for the battle belongs to. Come on, this is what the word says. You take. this part again. You take what the enemy meant for evil. You take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good. You turn it for good. Come on, somebody needs to do more than just sing it. You need to believe it right now. The greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Greater than any temptation. Greater than any battle. Come on, declare you take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good come on one more time you take what the enemy you take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good you turn it for good you turn it for good Amen. Why don't you go ahead and receive that right now? Hallelujah. We have the victory. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Brother David and Brother Seth. Incredible job as always. It's 
unfair sometimes you look at how blessed our church is with the talent that we have around here it really is god has done tremendous things for our church and i'm thankful for it i'm gonna get ready and call our first speaker tonight i'm gonna ask brother bob johnson's gonna come up and he's gonna be speaking to us for a few moments tonight and for some of us for some of us this will be the first time you've ever heard him speak i don't know that i've ever heard him speak in this setting I, one time i don't know that it's been a while um, i asked brother bob to come speak to us essentially about the importance of godly men uh, because of his testimony his background pastor james used to always make a note to say that essentially brother bob only came to us because he was afraid we were a cult um, so he, was, he was basically was only coming to see what we were trying to uh, convert his wife and daughter into, so that was it. <laughs> uh, but you come to Christian Life Center long enough, and you spend long enough here, and even if you didn't come with the right motives, there's something about this church. And there's something about the God of this church. That if you're around it, he has a way of getting a hold of your heart. So I'm going to ask Brother Bob to come and speak to us. You can be seated. I don't know if he'd want to tell you to go back to your seat, but I will. And Brother Bob, speak to your heart. Speak to us right. from your heart. Thank you. Thank you, Brother John. I'm a little nervous because I did do this one time, but it was 20 years ago. I was up here. And if you remember Brother Call, he heckled me while I was doing it. So <laughs> people that know Brother Call know, know what I'm talking about. All right, but uh, I'm up here to talk about some godly men that have changed my life. But to get started, you got to know where I came from. All right, I never went to church my whole life. Uh, I, can't, I went to church when I was five years old for one summer, and that was it. Um, it wasn't. I did learn a verse. I had to learn uh, the first verse uh, I ever uh, was... Uh, See, I forgot it already. <laughs> oh, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. That was all I had to learn. But five years old, I thought that was pretty good. But so I lived in a house with an alcoholic father, a very loving mother, and five kids. All right. So I did, we didn't have a church background of any kind. I mean, no type. We, we never prayed over food. We never, you know, nothing that reminded you of anything. I argued about God a few times against him just because I had no idea what. And so if I didn't know God, I could argue against him. And that was my background. So uh, I did all that. And 44 years old, I came here. And like Brother John said, I came here because my daughter came here. She got baptized. I never saw that. My wife came to watch her get baptized. She got pulled into this cult. And, uh, uh, and then she got baptized. I came for that one. All right. And so uh, we, I came for a few services and sat at home. And she'd say, you want to come tonight? And I'd say, nah. And then as they was getting ready to leave, I'd say, all right, I'll go, I'll go, I'll go. But the, the one godly man, and I know Brother John, he mentions his name all the time. He's the first one that ever did anything to me. And I think... What he said one day, we used to do a father-son picnic, all right? I had nobody in this church. My family, a lot of you are related to each other. My family was it. We had nobody related to anybody in this church. My son and uh, his wife would not, didn't go to church, so I couldn't have, I asked him if he wouldn't come. So Bishop, he goes, Brother Bob, I want you to be my guest at this father-son thing, all right? I don't know how that touched you, but that, that just, it was like, what? You got three boys in this church, you know, and you're asking me to come and be with you at this father-son thing? I mean, it changed the whole way I looked at things. So, I mean, he was my first that really, and you know Bishop, and Bishop is a godly man. I mean, what, what, you can always say, how do you know he's a godly man? Well, we can only know but what we see and what he does. And he shows it in everything he does. He showed it to me he, many, many times. Yes, yes. So that, that one godly man started an uh, avalanche 
of uh, people coming to me. I had uh, people know Chris Russell. Chris Russell was one of the first ones that ever came to me and said, hey, Bob, you want to learn about God? You want to learn about the Bible? And I said, yeah. So he would take me to his house. And you think, okay, you know, what's, what's somebody's house? He ran his house like a godly father. And his daughters and his wife, they, it was amazing to see that. So how do you run your family? I never did that. You know, we, our household was pretty wild, pretty crazy. Brandon knows. He was over there many times on Friday nights playing on my pool table. And this was before I was in church. But, uh, I mean, I, I still had no structure when, uh, even when after I started coming here. So uh, Chris started telling me things. He says, you need to read this book. Well, I told him, I said, Bob does not read. <laughs> I, I don't. I, I have a hard time reading. I said, Bob doesn't read. And he goes, what? I said, I can read that book, and I can read it all the way through. But I'm only going to remember two words out of the whole thing. You know, the and and. That's, I mean, it's true. And I hate to say it, but it is true. That's what happened. So Chris got me to read a very small book. I mean, he said, read this book. See if you can. So I read it, and I understood it. And it was like, oh, wow. So he gave me a thicker book. And then it went on like that. And then pretty soon, you hear, let's read the Bible through in a year. And... I hate to say it, but I've only done that twice in the 20 years I've been here. But that first year I did it, Chris pushed me to do it. All right? And I read it all the way through. I hadn't, you know, it was, it was an accomplishment. And it's like, you know, do you take pride in yourself? You know, it's prideful spirit. No, no, no. But I was so happy that I read the Bible through because a godly man pushed me through to do something like that. And so, uh, you know, then... Me and uh, Josh Barsati got together, okay? And we started coming over here on Saturday nights and praying. And I said, he says, we only going to do it for an hour. I said, an hour. An hour. And, you know, you're first in, you're in church and you're going to be coming over and praying for an hour. And Chris Russell came with us too. And pretty soon we were here every Saturday night praying. And all of a sudden... I could pray for an hour, and an hour was just like that. It went, I mean, just very easily to do. And I realized what these guys was teaching me, uh, what we were praying for, all of a sudden our church services were about the things we prayed for that night. It, and it's amazing how God will, will show you, you know, Open up doors. You say, I'm going to pray for this. Let's pray for the church study. We're going to pray for the youth. We're going to pray for our seniors. And the service was about that. So, you know, godly men have brought me to a place I didn't think I'd ever be. Because I was, I was a sinner, you know, like we all are. And I was an unbeliever. But those are just a few of the guys that, that helped me out. I know uh, I still have them today. I got Brother John Beckham. Me and him are golf buddies, all right, but we're more than that. You know, he is, me and him can talk. And you got to have somebody you can talk to that's in the church. And me and him can talk. And I love that about that relationship that me and him have. I knew him from a long time ago. We both went to the same school. I'm not, I wasn't a John Beckham fan then, okay? <laughs> No, no, that's true. The, I, and, but it's amazing how God can bring, you know, bring you all of a sudden. I come to church and here's John Beckham, you know. It's somebody that I knew from a long time ago. So it wasn't like I'm here and I don't know anybody. So, but, so Brother Beckham, uh, Brother Amani was another one that just amazes me. How he, you know, he's got these boys that are, if you ask anybody, Asher, Isaiah, and Amani, the boys, about them, all oh, those are great kids. So what's that mean? They had a great example, all right? And my kids were well grown up by then, but it's put something in me that says, I know that this can be done. I know that, uh, you know, 
godly kids can grow up in a, you know, he, his background was pretty wild too when he was in California, but it didn't, you know, it didn't shake him. He got through it. He raised a family and I love his boys. They're, they're awesome. Kids. I love brother Monty. They're just, they're just awesome people. And I, I believe they, yeah. So, uh, and you know, we've had, I've had pastor James was one of the the strongest because he would he would just listen to you he would talk to you he would tell you things but he'd also just you know joke around with you he would play it's like okay he's a pastor is he supposed to be doing that stuff <laughs> but he he did he did it all he, he was you know he showed he showed me love like bishop showed me love at the beginning and that uh, has changed me, has made me a better man, I hope. And uh, he, he did all that and, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, that was starting to get to me talking <laughs> about Pastor James, but uh, he, he did a lot of good things for my life. I mean, he's, it, it, he said, Bob, you wanna be a, Mark Fraser needs help at ushering. Do you wanna be a, the assistant head usher? And I'd only been here six months maybe, and it was like, what? You don't even know me. But I even said that to him once, and he says, you know, I know your spirit. Your spirit shows out. And I said, oh, you know, thank you. Thank you. Uh, but because of him and all, I mean, there's a lot of you in here. I don't want to keep naming names because there's so many that's helped me and everything. But I do want to say one name that uh, started it all, and that was Pat Sayers. All right? He... My daughter liked him, all right, and they were both in band, and, she, and he played, and she was a uh, majorette, and he one day asked her to church, okay, and that's, she came because she liked Pat, then she came and got baptized, then she got the Holy Ghost, you know, so one person, and I believe, I, I can say, I think Pat's a godly man. You know, his same way, his family, you know, shows all the things that he does. And Pat asked her to come to church. And from that day, well, almost from that day forward, our house changed. Because as John, Brother John said, I think it was Brother Beckham I said it to at that back door on the other sanctuary. You guys are brainwashing my kids. <laughs> and uh, my kid and my wife. And uh, from that day, when I said that. I never missed a day at church after that. <laughs> so those are the, you know, just a few of the godly men. So we have many godly men in this church, many. And they're willing to help. You don't even have to ask. Sometimes they're willing to help. And if you need somebody, just look around in this room. All right. There's so many men in here that you can go to and share your testimony with them. Share, you know one-to-one -one with them, and that's what happened to me, and that's what got me here, so thank you. Amen, amen. So, so many thoughts over there. First one I thought was, you just said Pat was a good godly man, and now we've <laughs> he said good things about all these people, and I was thinking, oh man, we're going to have to have repentance at the end of this. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. It's, we're just men. If men didn't pick on each other and rib one another, what would we do? We wouldn't hardly talk. I think that's most of my conversation. John Wilson is probably my best friend in this world, and that's half of our conversations. <laughs> we razz one another, but you know what I kept thinking when Bob was speaking was Brother Bob looked up to these men, but now he's one of them. We are pillars. It's, it, some of us, we can come to church all these years and you think, well, am I making an impact? Well, yeah, you're making an impact. Uh, some of you, you'll never come up here. There's some of you I would never ask to come up here because I know you would just be like, not a chance. There's no way. Uh, but you're still pillars. Yeah. You're pillars around this place. You, you have... Proven, you've stood the test of time and proven yourselves faithful and those kind of men that people can look up to. 
And that's what Brother Bob was talking about tonight. These men that they're just, they're bedrock that you can build upon. And for our young guys, the importance of it is there's so many influencers and people you can look up to. But you don't have to look outside these doors. You want good examples. You want men to look up to and say, you know, how do I live a successful life? How do I live a good life? How do I, how, how do I become a good man? You look around. You look around Christian Life Center where we have a multitude of good, godly men, strong men that are living this. Not perfect. I hope we don't hold perfection as the standard we all have to meet because then we're done. Uh, but we're godly, strong men that people can look up to and say, you know what? That means something. And Brother Bob came in looking at these men, and as I said, now he's one of them that I know I look up to. That I can say, you know what? I can count on Brother Bob. He's always going to be faithful. He's always going to have a smile. He's going to have a good demeanor, and he's going to be a good example to me and to, I know, my sons. They'll be able to look and say, you know, Brother Bob's a good guy. And he can get on to my youngest and say, you don't get to go out in the foyer without a parent. Uh, crack down on him. He deserves it. He needs it. <laughs> God bless you, brother. Thank you for speaking to us tonight. I have brother Dan Cavaney is going to come speak to us. Brother Dan does not have, he hasn't been here 20 years like brother Bob, but uh, when he came to us, uh, we've, ra we've ribbed him and called him drum machine Dan, but really the one that stuck was do it all Dan because he's done it all since he's been here. And that's something that I, I give him a hard time, but the reality is, first of all, he has the talent to do it, and I'm jealous. Um, but, amen, Jay. It, it's the spirit behind it is, where can I help? What do you need from me? If I can do it, I'll do it. If I have the ability, I'll do it. If I don't have the ability, I'll figure out how to do it. I don't think he knew how to build a couple years ago that the edifice for uh, um, uh that and then the, uh, the, the water feature for the um, VBS. Yeah, I don't think he, he may not have known how, but he learned how because it was asked of him. And that is admirable. And that's something that us men can look up to in the church is availability and willingness is always more valuable than talent or, oh, I have the, the anointing. The, the anointing's important, but ability and willingness, they're going to be more important because God can work with ability and willingness. So, Brother Dan, I'm going to ask you to come speak a word to us men. Man. Well, I don't know if I'm going to live up to all that. Uh, and I don't know how I'm going to follow bro Brother Bob either. That's second time I've heard that testimony, and it was just as good as the first. Thankful. Thankful that we have that kind of example here in the church. Amen, amen. Praise God. I'll give you, Jay, I'll give you a few bucks after service for hollering out for me back there. I appreciate it. All right, well, I'd, I'm going to get to my point real quick tonight. I... I just want to speak to you what's, what the Lord laid on my heart, and I, I hope I don't bring everyone down here. Um, I do have an encouraging word for you, but I just feel, feel challenged in my spirit tonight. And I just want to share that challenge with you that I, I, I feel that the Lord has for each and every one of us. I, I do want to give honor to Pastor JP. I'm, I'm so thankful for not just his leadership, but his friendship. And uh, CLC is blessed with all that he does. Amen. I give our pastor honor who's traveling tonight, and Bishop Kirk, I give, them, I give him honor as well. Thankful for their example, their ministry. But I guarantee you, if there is, if there is three men that is praying for your family every day, the, the, three, the three men are Pastor Enzi, Bishop Kirk, and Pastor JP. They care about your families. Amen. I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful for that. I feel those prayers daily. Lord knows that. Lord knows I need them. <laughs> and I'm, uh, I'm thankful that they're doing that. And, lifting us up before the Lord. I'm going to be real quick tonight. I, I really do. I want us to leave challenged tonight, but I want us to leave encouraged as well. That's my goal tonight. I think that's, that's a pretty common approach when you're preaching, teaching, and I'm hoping that's the, the goal we get to. I want to, talk about just, I want to talk about giving God our best from a couple different perspectives. and We toss around this word excellence a lot around here, 
And um, I believe everyone here, we would, we could, you could agree we would, that we all, I, I would hope that we all feel just a mutual obligation to do everything we can to be excellent leaders of our homes. I hope that's a mutual feeling that we have here tonight. And I, my, I think my wife coined this term. She labeled me once a fierce adversary of mediocrity. I, I, just, I just don't understand why you would settle. I don't understand why you would settle at that, that point of okay when just a little more work would get you over that hump to exceptional. That's, that's just me. That's just me. I don't know. I, it's, one thing, it's one thing I'm really thankful for here at CLC and because everything we do, and it, it trickles down from our leadership, the vision and people buying into the vision of serving with excellence. And I'm so thankful that, that in every, every ministry in our church that that vision is bought into, and I'm thankful that everything we do here, it's done with excellence. It's a great example that we set. Amen. And there, likewise, there, there's a reason, and there is a reason that we as the church, that we, that we seek to serve with excellence, and, and that we must serve with excellence. And as men, we must live with excellence, because one, it honors God. Number two, it inspires people. And number three, it builds trust. Three, we, three reasons, if you're taking notes, that we should live and serve with excellence. It honors God, it inspires people, and it builds trust. Now, while we are called, all called to serve God with excellence in the spiritual, it's, it's in the natural we see that we are, we're pre-wired with uh, a desire to want to witness excellence. We all want to see that incomparable ability or that incomparable talent. We want to see it on display. We crave to be left in awe of incredible feats of strength, for example. We, we, we crave to see that, 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 that athlete, you know, just be better than everyone else on the field or better than everyone else on the court. You know, I, I witness it every Sunday night when, when Link brings the ball up the court and somehow weaves his body through everyone on the court and then finishes with either hand. I mean, that's, it's just, I don't know how he does it, but that's just something that, you know, we see on Sunday night on a regular basis, for example. But uh, it, it, it's something that we're drawn to, and, and our appreciation of excellence, it doesn't come from our flesh, but it actually, this, it comes from our creator, because we are created in his image. And that means that, you know, we in turn, we develop some of those characteristics, we get some of those qualities, those are imparted to us, being created in his image. We seek justice because we know he is just. We desire love because... He is love. Deuteronomy 32 and 4, it's the only scripture I'm going to read tonight, and I'll reference a few other ones, but 32 and 4 says, He is the rock. His deeds are perfect. Everything he does is just and fair. He is a faithful God who does no wrong. He's how just and upright he is. So God does everything with excellence, so therefore we strive for excellence because he is excellent in everything that he does. Now, while it is our human tendency to crave excellence, it is also our, our human nature that can get in the way sometimes. It's that sin nature, that, that part of us that is it's in constant struggle and constant opposition against those, those godly characteristics. Talking about a, you know, an apathetic approach to our spiritual responsibilities. And I'm talking about myself here. I'm not trying to pass condemnation to anybody. I'm, I'm, I'm victim of these things just as much as the next, but that apathetic approach or carelessness or laziness, that, 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 that sin nature, it can manifest itself in just a countless number of ways. And I know we've, we've all experienced them at, time, at, at, at one time or another. But when our focus is diverted, we, we, you know, we can become sometimes satisfied with, with cutting corners or we can shirk on our responsibilities. We, we become comfortable with settling for less. And this is something, this is something I, I appreciated from. And, the, and honestly, when, when Pastor JP asked me to speak a couple weeks ago, this was the first thing that popped into my mind. And so I, something I appreciated about the last baseball coach I ever had. You know, there was no, there was no cutting corners. There was no shirking our responsibilities on the baseball field. Uh, those that are familiar with me and my personal background, you know that I, I played baseball. I, I've played baseball pretty much since I could walk. I, I always said as a young man, you know, before I, before I really began to, uh, that, that, that spiritual maturation began to set in, I always, uh, 
I really said it was the first thing I ever truly fell in love with. But uh, you grow up and you're, you, you get right in your mind and yeah. But so <laughs> there's so many memories that come to mind from, from my playing days. But there's one in particular from my American, American Legion playing days uh, I, was, I was reminded of for this evening I wanted, to, I wanted to share you with and try to pull something from. Now, I could usually, when I, when I played, I was either found, I was on the pitching mound or I was at third base. That's where you usually found me on the ball field. Now, uh, growing up, it was, my, it, was, it was never my natural tendency to dive for a ball. You see it every day when you watch professional baseball, and uh, it was just not something that I was pre-programmed with to sacrifice my body in that way you know, to keep the ball in front of me. I, I don't recall the first time I ever dove for a ball. I mean, eventually, you know, to be able to play, I had to, I had to be able to condition myself to do that, and ultimately we got there, but it just never came naturally. And I don't, I don't know if he's here tonight, but my favorite shortstop of all time, Nate Clark, my very favorite shortstop of all time, that man, to this day, I've played with him for over a decade, but he had, holds absolutely no regard for his body on, on the baseball or softball diamond. He'll still, he will still just absolutely lay it on the line and a lot of the time make the play. But um, yeah, if, it's, if the ball's hit in his general direction, he's, his, his body's on the ground. But anyway, I, I can recall being on the pitcher's mound and it was one of those situations late in the game, the you know, late innings, the game would be close, maybe a couple runners on base and you know, I'm leaning in. I, I, can, I can, as I think about it, I can just, it's just like I'm there again. I'm, I'm leaning in, you know, from the stretch to get the sign for my, my catcher, Jake McGuire, and, you know, the game could go either way at this point. And it, was, it would be at times like this that I could, with the same intensity, I, I can just hear it with the same intensity in my mind right now, just, just if he were here, but Coach Phil would holler out from the dugout. He would holler this, everyone's getting dirty here. Everyone's getting dirty here. He, would, he had one of those voices that when he shouted something, it's like you're, you, you feel like your ancestors could have heard it. I mean, from the grave. I mean, it's just, he just had one of those commanding voices as, as when he hollered out, you heard him. And uh, one of the other, he, he would also do this other thing that I think he just did it to try to be cool, but, and, and young and hip, but he would, he would do, he would go like this and be, when there was two outs, we were in the field, there's two outs, he'd be like, horns here, horns here, and he, he'd like look up like, you guys see? It, two outs. There's two outs, Phil. Okay. But anyway, so, so he, he would holler this late in the game, tight game, runners on, whatever. We were trying, we were trying to get through, this, get through this rough patch, and he would just holler out, everyone's getting dirty here. Now, those of you familiar with baseball jargon, you will know what that statement means. But just in case, that statement means that if a ball is hit anywhere close to you, you better be getting that jersey you're wearing dirty to ensure that that ball is kept in front of you, that it's knocked down, that whatever you gotta do to knock the ball down, keep it in front of you. You gotta be getting dirty. So, in other words, this wasn't the time to be playing the game in a, a routine fashion like you may have been playing the game earlier in, earlier in the game when the pressure you know, wasn't as intense. This wasn't the time to be playing like that. It meant sacrificing, maybe, maybe having to sacrifice your body, possibly, you know, enduring some, enduring some pain, you know, getting some bumps or bruises to make the play. It's, it, it wasn't a time for that apathetic, ho-hum type of approach to the situation. That statement, it was a reminder that if, if, if you want to achieve excellence, it, it might cost you more than what you're used to giving might cost you more than what you're used to giving. And the cost for not, <laughs> and the cost for not giving what is required, will, it ultimately won't just let you down, but it lets the entire team down. And it's, it's a really loaded statement when you think about it. Everyone, every, everybody's getting dirty here. There's a lot more to it than just those four words. But I truly feel, I feel in my spirit tonight that for each and every one of us, it is, it's the will of God for, for me to remind you husbands, you fathers, you, you future husbands, you future fathers, that, that we have an obligation. We have an obligation to our families to be ex excellent spiritual leaders in our homes. 
Amen. I'm not just talking. Now, young man, I'm, I'm not just talking to the adults here. I know some of you are single, haven't even thought about a girlfriend yet or thought about marriage or anything like that. We still have an obligation to be spiritual leaders. Amen. We, we live in the, and I, we don't need to go into details about it, but we live in the most perverse of generations, the most crooked of generations that you could ever imagine. And I, I blush at the things that Jackson tells me that, that fifth grade, his fifth grade classmates talk about. I mean, it's just, it's just so out there that I just can't even, I can't even fathom it. And, but man, we can't afford to be lazy. We've got to be willing to get dirty. You know, maybe, maybe we need to dredge up some things that we've been trying to hide from God. Maybe, maybe that's what's holding us back. Maybe when's the last time, men, that you've got on your faces and got your face in the carpet and begin to plead with God for favor for those that you hold dearest? Jesus. Jesus. I feel the Holy Ghost, man. It's late in the game, man. This is my point tonight. It's late in the game. Maybe in some of your families it could go either way at this point. But are you willing to move beyond that? Are you willing to move beyond that point of comfort and, and pray like you've never prayed before? Are you willing to worship like you've never worshipped before? Are you willing to let go of things that, that maybe before you could never let go of? And I want to remind you, man, you can stand with me right now. I, I'm, I'm, I'm wrapping up here. I wasn't going to be long, but... Just to echo some of the things that have been said from this pulpit recently, I know Brother Surstad talked about it last Thursday, and Pastor, that, that, oh, that wonderful message he preached a couple weeks ago about guardians of the next generation. I just, you don't have to go through this battle alone, men. We are blessed with such a diverse group of anointed young men and of anointed, uh, seasoned anointed men. And I just, I just want to speak tonight against the lie of the enemy that, that, that you are all alone and that no one is on your side. That is a lie from the pit of hell. I'm telling you tonight, you've got a room full of men that are here for you, that are for you, that are on your side. There's a God here that is on your side no matter what you are facing. Young men, you need those older ones that have been through the fire. And to our elders, you need the strength of our young men. We need that combination of experience and fortitude and, and energy and strength. Reminds me of Matthew chapter 11 when, when Jesus was talking about taking on his yoke and, and learning of him. That, that physical yoke that he used as an illustration, that, that yoke was used, it was used to join the, dra join the neck of two draft animals. So together, those two beasts under that yoke, they could more effectively pull that heavy load together. And in the time when Jesus spoke these words, farmers would often pair a young, inexperienced, but vigorous animal with an older, weaker, but, but seasoned animal. The younger animal would learn from the more experienced one and the older one would benefit from the younger one's strength to help carry the load. Re Real simple point there. We need each other, men. Regardless of age, regardless of station of life, regardless of your experience in serving God, we need each other. With everything that we are facing, the attacks coming at our families and our children from left and right, we need, we need more than ever that unification of generations. We need that generational unity that Pastor preached about. Because division, the, the, the fact is, division only has one destination, and that is destruction. But a unified body of leaders, and if you are in this room tonight, you are a leader. Hear me tonight. If you are in this room tonight, you are a leader. But a unified body of leaders, when we come together and begin drawing from each other's attributes and building up one another and, and just getting under that yoke and plowing those fields together, that, that's the formula that's the formula we need tonight to be successful. Rolling up our sleeves and getting dirty together. That's the formula that's going to get our families to heaven. And that's the goal tonight, church. Amen.
I wonder tonight if, I wonder tonight if we could maybe step out of that comfort zone a little bit here tonight and find someone of a different generation here as we prepare to close in prayer. I want to, I want to give you an opportunity to, to respond if the word of the Lord has ministered to you. I, I wonder if you could bind, bind together with someone of a different generation right now. Just step out in the aisle and find someone and pray with them and for them. Maybe you've never done this before if you're here for the first time, but I know we have some men that would love to pray with you because we are stronger together than we would ever be apart. Come on, I don't want there to be anybody on their own. I want you to bind with someone right now. Take someone by the hand, put your arm around their shoulder. We're going to get dirty together tonight. We're going to give everything. We're not going to hold anything back. It's late in the game right now, young men. It's late in the game, old men. We don't know when the last chance will be that we'll have this opportunity. <laughs> Come on, the Holy Ghost is ministering right now. Come on, reach out to Him with everything that you have within you. Oh, in the name of Jesus. i 
I wonder if we could all just gather around the front for a moment. I felt the Lord speak to me so strongly as, as Brother Bob came up to speak and then Brother Dan, that God is calling us to not treat this as a formality, to not treat this as just a, a special service for family month and, and we're just men and we're getting together and yet we heard the word, Brother Dan, you spoke to us, Brother Bob, you spoke to us tonight. But I feel the drawing of the Holy Ghost that God is calling us to not treat this as a formality. That as men of not only our homes, but in this region, we're to come before him with lifted hands. And we ought to cry out to him right now. I'm just wondering if corporately, together, we could just give God a few moments of our undivided attention. If we could all just lift our hands right now and cry out to him. Come on, it's, it's nothing to be ashamed of. We ought to be able to cry out to our God right now. Come on, we ought to wail out to God right now. He's calling us to be men of this nation, to stand up for holiness and righteousness. Would you cry out to him for a minute? Almighty oh, God, I pray over these men right now in the name of Jesus. God, it would not just be a formality that we come together and let the Holy Ghost move. Oh, come on, I feel the drawing of the Holy Ghost right now. Oh, he's speaking to a man who needs to be the leader in his home. Oh God, let the Holy Ghost guide us and direct us in our homes, Jesus. He's speaking to a young man right now who needs to be the leader in his school. Oh God, impart wisdom. Let the Holy Ghost move. The gifts of the Spirit operate, Jesus. Oh God, let us be men who come before you and 
not ashamed to praise you outwardly with lifted hands. Oh God, I pray that you purify our hearts right now before you, oh God. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Men, don't let this moment pass without hearing that challenge. Don't let this just be a formality in this month, in this week. But we've got to take this word and we've got to strive for excellence because this is the last days. This is the last days. But I believe God has given us favor. I believe he's given us favor if we'll just step into it. In Jesus' name. said he would that men everywhere would lift up holy hands and pray we want to stem the flow of everything going wrong in society it starts with men it's it's a completely different lesson than sermon but uh, the statistics are all out there that when when they started implementing different things to take men out of the home and to lessen the importance of fathers in the home and they started to take that out you can watch you can see the plotting down of society when you remove men i i know society makes light of us if you if anyone that knows me knows one of the fastest ways to make me uncomfortable and get me mad is uh, to start the the deprecating humor of men the constantly putting down men it's it's the non-stop uh, symphony of how men are dumb and men are weak and men are pointless and men are we don't we'd be lost without our wives and we're just pointless and we're everything's wrong with men and it's just this constant beating of how worthless and pointless men are and, and you look around society and you see why are we in this shape because they've torn men down But if men will pray, if men would lift up holy hands and pray, and if men would do what was preached tonight and be men, we'll see homes changed. We'll see lives changed. We'll start to see society change. Because if you start changing homes and you start changing families, that that cuts off the flow of how everything's getting worse. And then you'll start to see as men, as we change our kids and teach them the right things and the right way to live, and they go out and they start taking part in society in a bigger way, they can change the face of society. It all starts with when men say, you know, I don't like what's going on around me, and I'm going to stop being silent about it, and I'm going to pray, and I'm going to be bold, and I'm going to teach my kids the right way to do things. Thank you all for the word tonight, Brother Bob, Brother Dan, and our youth pastor, student pastor, Brother Brandon. He's brought that call to prayer at the end. Thankful for meetings like this. Brother Dan, I think you're right. We need to do this more often. This is powerful tonight. I've enjoyed this. I hope all of you have enjoyed it. I hope you take it with you, that challenge, the challenge to be extra. I called Dan extra sometimes, and it was just, why are you so extra? And it's just, it's that refusal to settle for mediocrity. Well, let's be extra, guys. Is it okay to be a little bit extra when it comes to our family, our wives, our kids? I, I, and I'll say this, and then I'm going to get us out of here to go have some refreshments and some, uh, some games next door. But uh, for some of us, I, I know it hits some of you. Some of us that are, or some of you that are grandparents, maybe you think, well, my kids are out of the house. What kind of impact can I have? You can still have that impact on your kids, and you can be praying for them, and you can nudge them. You say, well, they don't want anything to do with this. Well, keep praying for them. But I'll tell you what you can do. When you get those grands at the house, you can still teach those grands about the love of God. You can still teach them grandbabies the truth of Scripture. Hero Israel. And you can teach those grandbabies Acts 2.38. You can feed into them. You're not, you, you, you don't get to retire from this. And for those of us that are dads, 
I know we sometimes don't know, we don't know what we're doing. I don't know what I'm doing sometimes. But you know what? I'm going to try and be extra. And I'm going to try and be dedicated to showing, showing the right way to live. Joe and Emerson have seen me at my worst. I hope they also see me at my best. I hope they also see me praying and see me living this. I hope they see me preaching and teaching and trying to live up to it even if I fail miserably. I want to be extra and I want to set that example. So men, set that example. Let's change the world by changing the way we treat our kids and our homes and it will spread into the rest of the world. Amen. Powerful service tonight. Next door, Brother Steve Fife has been working. He has refreshments. I know there's different things for uh, fellowship set up. I imagine there's probably cornhole. Uh, don't hold me to that, but I know a lot of you love that, and it's probably over there. Uh, he might just make us play basketball, and based on, I know I could use the exercise. I might not be dressed for it, but I know I could use the, the exercise of being forced to run back and forth a little bit. Uh, but let's pray in dismissal, and then let's go have some fun next door. Amen. God, we give you praise today. I am thankful, thankful for the chance to come together tonight and worship you, this chance to pray, this chance to hear this word and to be challenged. And God, the, to hear your voice, you speaking to us, to not just let this be something that stops here. I don't want it to be something that stops here, but I want us to keep this with us. I want it to keep playing over in our heads as we leave this place that we're going to be better. We're not going to settle for mediocrity. We're not going to settle for just what we've always been. We want more. Help us to be the men you want us to be. I pray it in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Real quick, if you've not yet registered and you are planning on coming Friday night for marriage weekend, please do that right away. There's always room for more and it will bless your marriage. Come on out. In Jesus' name, you are dismissed.